my next guest, you know her from her new special on Netflix. It's a one-man show. It's a special. It's so much more. It's called Nate Natalie Palomides. Thank you for being here. Moses, hey. My it's first candlelit you. interview. This looks like you're about to tell all. I sure am. I, even without the candle, I would I would just spill my whole guts, whatever you want to ask me. I think you can relate to this. A lot of our stuff has to do with the audience and being able to, in your <sighs> case, physically touch them. Yeah, Hit up in their face. A lot of the hee hee ha ha's are from, oh my God, she touched that man. I know, that's my whole shtick. And now I can't touch anybody. Both my solo shows are just me like, you know, swap and spit with people and grabbing their knockers, et cetera, et cetera, you know? And you too, you know? Yeah, I, remember... I mean, I get a lot, much more backlash for grabbing knockers, but- um, You gotta ask. Yeah, no, it is like <laughs> I talk to the audience and I think if you're a comedian that's always doing like one-liners and you don't need it, then you're fine. You're able to roll into this, but to not have the live feedback. Oh man. I was worried that your show was not gonna translate to a special and it really oh, my did God. because it is like exactly what we're saying. It is the live aspect of being in the room me personally i was like i hope she just knows me too good that she doesn't call on me oh um, we're, yeah i didn't you, call on you did it no were you there were you at the taping i'm not at the taping no i've oh, i think but... i've been to three of the shows when you were workshopping the show oh my gosh thanks for coming i remember very uh very every time I think of you, I think about this bit that you did with yarn where you're like making a sweater with the audience or something. Is this accurate? Yeah. I was going to say I remember it very well, but then I was like, do I remember it very well? But that that's how I remember you. Whenever I think Moses, I think making a sweater that's with the, the yarn audience. guy. The yarn it's, guy. That's Catboy. Um, speaking of bits I cannot do in the lockdown, it's I'm connected to every audience member via a rope and then they can pull me wherever and I try to do like a physical bit or whatever and then they're yeah. they're essentially uh, like a puppet controlling They're manipulating me. you. It's genius, it's genius. Genius bit, beautiful physical comedy. Ugh. But not every venue appreciates uh, big physical and even prop comedy. Um, this is have, true. Do you have any stories of venues that were mad? Because I think about that now of like, oh, when you watch a show, like some, some stagehand has to clean that up. Yeah, well, you know, I always try to be very hands on with my cleanups and try to help like the stage hands, you know, but that sometimes doesn't always, uh, you know, make them less annoyed, but they're always pretty nice. I remember at UCB Franklin, which they've always been very supportive there anyhow, but I did, I flooded the stage. So in the Netflix special, I'm in a bathtub with the shower and, but in the live show that I just did myself DIY. I just used a camping shower with a yeah. baby pool um, underneath it. And this particular show at UCB, I didn't pull the baby pool fully underneath the shower. And I just flooded the hole underneath of the stage. And the artistic director was very nice. She was just like, hey, you know, you flooded the stage. If you do the show here again, you got to make sure that the pool is catching the water and so i was like that's that's fair that's fair and also yeah. i just i i, I do cringe because nothing like kills the bit than like apologizing for it i know i know yeah but they're super sweet is it something that you think about now when you're workshopping something of like oh i'm gonna have to tour with this so maybe i can't well i mean i've seen you breathe fire i was gonna say breathe fire but you've done oh, that yes in a very small venue that is made if like the Virgil is like if you ask the fire department to build an example of a fire hazard, <laughs> it's low ceilings, the dustiest <laughs> curtains, and the curtains hang low too. They hang real low. Yeah. So this is probably like a dickish way to go about doing my stuff, but I kind of operate with a apologize later kind of attitude, uh, which you know probably is not the best way you know maybe it's like an asshole way to go about doing things and like if i had caught the theater on fire that would have fucking sucked like i didn't i didn't ask the producers if i could do that right but if you did ask them they wouldn't let you do it yeah i've ripped down entire curtain back back rod of a curtain you did hanging on that i've broken a clock on stage that looked expensive um, at what venues uh 
that was the Portland Helium. And then it was the Kennedy Center, and it was all like <gasps> older people, and it's like a what? 6 p.m. show, and I had the rope sweater thing that you're talking about. Yes. And uh, I I took someone out, like it went across her her face like that, like a rope burn. Oh no. And I went back, and they were like, oh, they were she was cool about it, and then uh, I went backstage to kind of like say thank you to everyone that ran the venue and kind of get like my pats on the back because it, it went well. Yeah. And I yeah. just overheard them before I went to the tech room. They were like what the hell was that uh, what the hell and i told him not to climb on that stuff and i was just like oh ooh, it didn't ooh. feel cool it didn't feel like i'm an artist it just felt bad for them yeah you're, they're like what the fuck oh my god actually one time so me and courtney peroso do this bit where I play a dolphin trainer and she plays a dolphin. And that old bit, this, like, yeah. That old bit. We, they have this toxic relationship. And at the end of the bit, she's sick of him. And so I'm dangling a fish in front of her for her to eat her treat. And she grabs it out of my hand and starts beating me with the fish. So we're doing this show in Edinburgh, Scotland. Have you, you were me- No, you, you told to me to Edinburgh? do it, but I, I, I was going to do it the 2020. You were going to do it the 2020. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Okay, I remember this. But now. you were the so, one that was pushing me to do it. So essentially you get to do your show every night for 30-ish days. Yeah, exactly. I think you would kill it. Anyway, uh, I was just there visiting in 2019 and we were doing like a, a bit on a lineup show and uh, it was a midnight show and everything in Scotland closes at like four o'clock or whatever you know it's the height of the summer there i go to the fishmonger at like four o'clock as late as i could to get this fish for the bit and it's just sitting in my backpack all day you know i think maybe in some ways it made the bit a little more punchy Mm -hmm. it made it a little bit more effective it gave it like another kind of factor that it smelled just like rank and when she beat me with the fish that night, and we ended up going, they went ran way over. We ended up going up at like 2 a.m. So this fish has been sitting in my backpack, Scotland summer, since 4 p.m. It's 2 a.m. She beats me with it. Fish guts go flying everywhere, all over the theater, and just like. Is this a I bigger mean, fish? If it's got guts, it's like, what are we talking about? Yeah, could you hold we're this talking up like Scottish. Photo? Yeah, you could hold it up in a photo. Scottish mackerel, you know, I think it's a good like 10, 11 inches at least. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's just, you know, we were pr- apologizing profusely afterwards because the, the theater just reeked of fish. And everybody does their shows in there, like, the next day, all throughout the day. And they were doing everything they could, like, blowing fans out the theater and, uh, you know, spraying Febreze everywhere. But it didn't quite resolve the issue. It never went away. And you want it to go away. You go back in. You're like, let me smile. It's probably fine. And you yeah, can, it, it doesn't leave. Yeah, you get it. You get it. Is there a, an entertainer that informed the way that you perform today? Is there something mm. you watch where you're like, I didn't know you could do that? Because sometimes I watch your stuff and I'm like, oh, I didn't know you could do that and it just pushes me in a in a in a direction to to experiment more to try different things oh thanks moses i think i would say the same thing about you to be honest like whenever i watched your cat guy i was like whoa i think brent weinbach was actually the first person i saw in john daly doing the drunk christmas tree yeah i was actually interning at conan summer 2011 and i just went to like ucb and John Daly was doing his sappity tappity drunk Christmas tree, and my mind was blown. I was like, whoa, you can, like, just go be a character and, like, interact with people and just be fucking dumb. And then uh, I saw Brent Weinbach, also at UCB, and he was, like, doing some weird fucking bit where he was, like, grinding on people in the audience. Not, not actually touching them, yeah. you know, but in their face and I was just like whoa these guys are weird and um they don't give a fuck so Nate you uh is on Netflix right now this, the response has been great it's been cool to see people see what everyone has seen for so many years of you doing your own thing carving out your own lane and now people are sharing it and it seems like it's doing pretty well Thanks, Moses. I think people like it and like you said I was also concerned that it wouldn't translate you know, and then, you know, cut some bits for time, which are also like, 
you know, just like kills you inside. But yeah, I think all in all, you know, I, I feel like a lucky girl. You know, it's like so cool and um, just to have it out there is awesome. And I can't. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's crazy to go from like some black box theater to like on Netflix, people in a you know Chile can watch it and stuff like that. How cool is that? You know, the, the Chile market for you has been insane. <laughs> We've hailed you as a deity there. It's been uh, incredible. I blew up in Chile. I don't know what's going on, but the I get a lot of DMs from people in uh, Chile. If you can say one thing to your Chile fans, we got a lot in the comments right now. Chile is going off. They actually want you to get involved <laughs> in politics. Like, do you, they said, pick a side. I don't know if that means anything to you. I, I say uh, no comment right now. No comment gotta, right now. Uh, no comment right now. Um, Every I wish I knew how there. to say that in Spanish. Um, but yeah, no comment, Aura. And uh, come back to me uh, later. Later. We watched the special. <laughs> uh, thank you, Natalie. Uh, hopefully thank you can you. stick around for a little bit after. But uh, oh, Nate is on Netflix right now. Highly recommend it. Thank you, Moses.